Don't overdo it, at least until you get better at hunting, all right? Try talking with Garai if there's something you don't understand. But watch out, her stories are long and boring. And don't tell her I said that. Well, take care. I'll be waiting for you. Ever since your father disappeared into the forest, Chorus has been taking very good care of Cyrus. However, he promised to do so only until you came of age. I think it would be best for you to study under him. Empties are normal silkworm cocoons. They have not been changed in any way. Capturing your prey into the empties is the foundation of the Cocoon Master hunting technique. Fierce minions cannot be captured right away. First, you must weaken them and pacify their spirit. That is where swordsmanship comes into play. Once you have weakened them, play your flute. If the tune has soothed the minion, its spirit will seek tranquility and thus become captured into the empty cocoon. Cocoons that contain a captured minion are known as fireflies. A firefly is a cocoon in which a minion has been captured. But do not be deceived by its beautiful glow. Although it has been captured in the cocoon, it is still a minion. Its curse has by no means been removed. If left like this, you cannot summon the minion within, nor spin it into silk. If a villager tries to spin a firefly into silk, they shall be doomed to die by its curse. Removing the curse requires purification by the divine magic of my people, the Nagi. Once purified, a firefly cocoon changes into a white cocoon. You can summon the magic beast from within a white cocoon. Summon the magic beast to fight in your stead by playing your flute. The power of a summoned beast shall far exceed your swordsmanship. 
I think you will find it to be a powerful weapon. There are four types of magic. They are fire, water, earth, and air. Each has its own properties. An adept cocoon master must also be able to use the right type of magic at the right time. Also remember that white cocoons can also be spun into beautiful silk thread. Black cocoons are the cocoons of ruin. They are cocoons that do not belong in this world. The difference between black and white cocoons lies in their method of purification. Purification by a Nagi woman yields a white cocoon. But if a man purifies one, it will become a black cocoon which will bear a wicked dark beast. If a Nagi male purifies a firefly, he shall become possessed by the resulting black cocoon and be transformed into a beast. Everything a black cocoon touches shall be reduced to ruin, even a cocoon master. The black cocoon is the ruin of people's hearts. You must never touch one. Minions that you capture in the forest are merely imprisoned in cocoons. A firefly cocoon is of no use to you as it is. You may neither use it for profit nor release the spirit imprisoned within. You must first ask Mavu to purify to cleanse the spirit within. Cleansed firefly cocoons become white cocoons will find the minions to be useful in more ways than one. Purification is the work of a Nagi woman who has wed a cocoon master. Releasing the spirits is not your work alone. It is to be done by both of you. That was soon after I left the Nagi village with Mavu who was yet an infant. I came across a wounded man laying collapsed on the ground. He was a cocoon master. They were grave wounds, but my treatment revived him. The man thanked me and produced a flute from his pocket. He said that he wished me to deliver it to his son in Cyrus. And he disappeared into the depths of the forest without telling me why. That man was your father, Riquetz, also known as the Lion of Peril. So, we were fated to settle down and live here in Cyrus. Perhaps this too was the will of Erlim, god of the forest. Well, you should be off now. Oh, and please do be careful. travel in the guise of cocoon masters. 
If you are a real cocoon master, prove it to me by playing that flute. Slowly now. Son of Riquettes, the cocoon master of Cyrus. So if Riquettes' son has ventured out here to the forest, something terrible must have happened in Cyrus. Tell me what it is. I see. So the locusts have reached as far as Cyrus. So, you have come seeking the calabash herb. But, you're flute playing. You still have much to learn, don't you? Your father would never forgive me if I let you go into the forest and die. My name is Chorus, and since my friend Riquettes is not here to do so, I shall be the one to initiate you into the secret arts of the Cocoon Master. Yes, we can summon the Holy Minions. That is why we are known as Cocoon Masters. When you play your flute, you will be summoning to this earth the divine magic of the captured minions. After all, we, the beasts of knowledge, are no match for the minions lurking deep in the forest. They are stronger than us, so we must use them to our advantage. We pit them against each other, minion versus minion. Keep in mind, you may only carry three minions at a time. You can store extras back in the village. Also, each beast possesses an elemental property. Keep the following relationships in mind during battle. Earth withstands water, water douses fire, fire consumes air, and air blows away earth. Know your opponent's element and think before you act. With each battle won, your minions will gain in strength and size. But they grow much faster when you merge them with one another. Once you have obtained a few of them, return to the village and ask Mavu to merge them for you. The elemental and physical characteristics of the two creatures you choose will be combined into one. Attributes and special abilities can be either lost or gained depending on your choices. I encourage you to gather a wide variety of creatures and to experiment by merging them in new and interesting ways. All right then, let us put what I have taught you into practice. My retreat is in the depths of this forest. If you arrive there safely, I shall acknowledge your potential. <laughs> oh, 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 son of the Lion of Peril, you shall become a cocoon master worthy of your father's name. Go on now, get going.
Boy, I hear that there are those who disguise themselves as cocoon masters to poach game here, and you could be one of them. Look, man. Uh, I mean, look, boy. I shall test whether or not you are the real thing. You can really kick ass, can't you? Well, that will be all for today. Chorus's retreat lies in the depths of this forest. Go on, get out of here. Next time, I won't go so easy on you.
Don't overdo it, at least until you get back. Try to. Our adversary we do love, and pray do we for the tormented. Grant us, the beasts of knowledge, the power to touch the spirit within. Magic beasts who doth serve us, merge thy bodies together and become of even greater power. Reveal to us thine heroic form. Well, take care. I'll be waiting for you. Shall they ever know good fortune, those who fight for what is right? Never shall they return to Erlim. Oh, if we but only ask, grant us our daily bread. Well, take care. I'll be waiting for you.
Ha-ha! <laughs> so, the son of Riquettes is even more capable than I had thought. I checked my texts for information on the Calabas herb, but came up empty-handed. But I have heard of a folk tale that describes a powder that wakes the sleeping. It is a tale of a wondrous powder possessed by a bird man named Kikina, who lives in the dragonfly forest. Perhaps that powder is infused with the Calabas. Though this is but conjecture, I think it is worth looking into. Here is the key to the dragonfly gate. You should have it. Well then, head back to the village and continue to build your skills. It will take a few months before you are ready for the dragonfly forest. Meet me back here this summer. I will teach you what you need to continue your quest. <laughs>